Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefine Horizons. This is another one of our Field Survey Friday videos. These are the videos we do to teach you guys a little bit about field surveying. A lot of these videos we do for our mapping techs that don't get out into the field as much as we like. So trying to get them ready for the CST exam, LST exam, but there's, there's other good stuff in here too uh, for, for people that are actually field surveyors and I uh, want to get a little better at what they do. So in this video, I'm just going to give you some some of my kind of general tips for executing field surveys. These are just general tips, so they don't apply to any particular type of survey, but if I can remember, I'll do some more videos with some tips on specific types of surveys. But this is just, these tips, eight tips, apply to any kind of field survey you're doing, basically. Okay, so I want to go through these. So I've got eight of them. Uh, I think they're all important. <laughs> okay, but here's the first one, and I uh, I remind my crews about this a lot, but uh, the, the first tip is don't just jump out of the truck and immediately go get your equipment and start working. Um, and you, you might, when you first hear that, you might think, well, you're the boss, Landon. Don't you want people to just get, get to work as soon as they show up on the site? Well, yes, I do. I do want them to get to work, but I don't necessarily want them to get the equipment and start surveying right away. So... What I tell people to do is when you first get to the site, especially if it's your first time there, do a site walk. I want you to walk to site. Um, if it's a big site, drive it. Drive the site. Drive around the site. Drive through, you know, drive through some of the roads that go through the site if it's a big survey area. Um, get familiar with it, right? Do a little recon. Even if you've been to the site before, it doesn't hurt to get out and do a site walk, um, you know, see what's changed, you know, evaluate um, conditions, you know, uh, are there uh, is, things have changed because of the weather or because of construction or other things um, that might impact safety or the way you're going to work for the day? So I, I always tell my crews, you know what? You get to the site, take 20 or 30 minutes, walk that site, right? And what I tell my crews is when you do that site walk, walk it with your Rodman. And as you're walking with your Rodman, teach them, right? Teach them what you're looking for, what you're looking at, what's important. Okay, so do a site walk. Don't just grab your gear and immediately start to go to work. You will find inevitably that if you skip this and you just grab your gear and immediately start working, you will cost yourself that 20 or 30 minutes you would have spent on the sidewalk or more in inefficiency the rest of the day. So that's my first tip. Second tip, think about your survey control. Where are you going to put it? What kind of control are you going to set? Uh, how permanent does it need to be? When are you going to find it again? How are you going to survey it? You know, think about that as you do your site walk. Think about it throughout the day, right? So think about how you're going to put control on the site. And then when you're done with that, think about it again. Because <laughs> it's really important. So think about it at least twice. Um, you know, if you're doing total station work, think about your line of sight. If you're doing GPS work, think about your visibility. You know, how much open sky you have. Uh, but inevitably, you know, not having a good control layout will, will cost time and money. So that's something that deserves some thought. So don't rush that. Think about where you're going to put your control. You know, in almost all cases, we try and get control off-site, especially, you know, almost, not always, but a lot of times we're working on projects where there's going to be some kind of development or construction, and so on-site control is going to get destroyed at some point. So think about your off-site control. Next thing, next tip, start work, keep everyone busy. Um, I, I see crews do this. For some reason, it seems like it's more of a problem with union crews than non-union crews, but I'll go to a job site and I'll see the party chief is running the instrument, whether it's a GPS rover or the rod on a robotic total station, and the chainman's just kind of following them around with a with a bag of stakes and paint. What a waste of human talent that is, <laughs> and a waste of time and money. So if you're running a robot, make sure that the robin can stay busy. Um, usually if you're doing topo, um, there's no reason to have two guys on the rod with a robot if you're doing topo. Um, if you're doing construction layout, it, it makes sense because one guy can set set the wood stakes and mark them and paint them and flag them while the other guy's running the rod. But for anything but construction layout, if you, if you got a robot, in my shop, the only time it's acceptable to have two men on the rod or the rover like that is if the party chief is teaching the robin how to do something. Otherwise, have that second man do something else. He can do field notes. He can take site photos. He can do dips if it's not in the road. Um, but... Keep everyone busy. Think about how you're going to do that, right? That might that might take some forethought, some planning. Again, that gets back to number one. 
Don't just jump out of the truck and start working. That doesn't mean, you know, if you got a two-man crew that both guys have to be ev busy every second of the workday, but with some planning and, and foresight, you can make good use of the of both men, right? Or both people. Could be could be two ladies, could be two women. Um, so if you're a crew chief, you gotta think about how you're gonna keep your folks busy. Four, safety. Think about safety, right? So wear your vest, use your cones, put your signs up. Don't do stupid stuff. Um, this is really important. At my shop, we don't pay lip service to safety. Safety is really important. And you may think, you know, well, Landon, you're the boss, you're the business owner. You know, you say that, but you really want your guys to work fast and not worry about safety. That's not true. The worst thing that could happen to me as a business owner is to have an accident on a job site. It causes problems with workman's comp insurance. Um, I could lose a good employee um, for days or weeks or months. Um, I could have to call somebody's wife or girlfriend and tell them they got hurt or boyfriend or husband and tell them that, that one of my gals got hurt. So this is really important to me. We don't take shortcuts here at RH. You shouldn't either. So uh, again, this is something you can keep an eye on as you do your site walk, right? What are the potential safety hazards and how do you mitigate those? Okay. Take good notes, good field notes. This is easy to easy to skip this, right? Every time I, I'm in the field and I think I don't need to take good notes because I'm a licensed surveyor, I've been doing this 20 years, I kick myself in the rear end afterwards. Always take good notes, right? I've got some other videos that show you how to do that. Take lots of photos. You got a camera on your phone, no excuse for this. We have 360 cameras that we give our guys to. Um, you always, I've never come back from a job and said, boy, I wish I would have taken fewer photos. <laughs> I always get, I always get back in the office and, say, I, office and say, I wish I'd have took a few more photos. So take lots of photos. Take twice as many photos as you think you're gonna need. Tip number seven, walk the site before you leave. Uh, now you may say, Landon, why, <sighs> we walked the site when we got there. Why are you making us walk the site again? Uh, Cause we screw stuff up and we miss stuff. Walk the site again before you leave. Look for utilities you might've missed. Um, Look for equipment you might have forgotten, left up, back site, GPS base, cones, signs, right? Walk that site before you leave. Make sure you've locked gates, closed doors, have all the lids back on the manholes, that kind of thing. Okay, so this is mandatory at my shop. Got to do a got to do a site walk before you leave. If it's a bigger site, you can drive it. Okay, and the last thing is use a checklist. That's tip number eight. So at my shop, we have a, a checklist of before you leave the, the, the site checklist into, sur into field survey checklist. We could do better about using it, but we have one. And um, I'm gonna try and do a better job of that myself. So there you go, there's my eight tips for executing field surveys. Like I mentioned, that applies to every kind of field survey you do. Uh, I'll try and remember, we'll, we'll try and remember to do some, some more of these videos with tips on specific types of field surveys. But there you go, there's my eight tips for every kind of field survey. Know them, read them, write them, memorize them, use them. Thanks for watching, guys.